After 11 flights, Starship still hasn't touched orbit. <sighs> Critics are already comparing it to New Glenn's instant orbital success, calling it a failure. But Flight 12 is about to prove them all wrong with a strategic approach SpaceX has quietly perfected. What's this brilliant method that makes orbital flight almost certain? And why did SpaceX choose this path over rushing to orbit early? Let's dive right in. Here's the reality that most people miss. New Glenn's upper stage isn't even comparable to Starship. It's an expendable second stage, just like Falcon 9's, used once and discarded. Starship is a 9-meter wide, 50-meter tall spacecraft built from scratch to be fully reusable. And when critics celebrate New Glenn's drone ship landing, they're celebrating what Falcon 9 has been doing weekly for years, while completely overlooking Super Heavy's three Mechazilla tower catches, something literally no one else on Earth has achieved. <clears throat> this is where SpaceX's strategy becomes crystal clear. They didn't copy existing designs. They're building the future. And that takes validation, not rushing. Every flight from IFT-1 through IFT-11 has been methodical progression. Early flights saw catastrophic failures, vehicles breaking apart mid-flight. Now Starship deploys payloads on suborbital trajectories, survives brutal re-entries almost perfectly, and executes controlled landing maneuvers. That's engineering evolution happening in real time. Flight 12's mission is straightforward but critical. SpaceX is validating the entire V3 upgrade package before attempting orbital insertion. The six new Raptor 3 engines on Starship have accumulated over 40,000 seconds of test fire time at McGregor, simulating flight profiles. But ground testing isn't space. In the vacuum above Earth, engines must operate flawlessly with zero vibration issues, perfect combustion stability, and reliable in-space relights. One failure at the wrong moment could end the mission and delay everything by months. The numbers tell the real story. Reaching low Earth orbit requires accelerating to 7.8 kilometers per second, but that's only in a perfect vacuum with no gravity. Reality is harsher. Gravity drag pulls the rocket down throughout ascent, and atmospheric drag fights it during the initial climb. Together, those losses add 1.5 to 2 kilometers per second to the required delta V, meaning the full stack needs to deliver over 9 kilometers per second from the ground. Super Heavy brings 33 Raptor 3 engines, producing roughly 9,250 tons of thrust at liftoff making it the most powerful rocket ever built. After staging, Starship's six Raptors add approximately 1,680 to 1,800 tons to complete orbital insertion. On paper, those numbers work perfectly. The challenge isn't raw power, it's reliability under extreme conditions. Beyond engines, Flight 12 tests the upgraded hot staging ring, improved grid fins on Super Heavy, and most critically, the revised heat shield design on Starship. The heat shield is everything. Without it performing flawlessly, no orbital mission succeeds. SpaceX is being methodical because they're not building a rocket for headlines. They're building infrastructure for Mars, and that requires absolute reliability. If Flight 12 validates all systems, Flight 13 becomes the historic moment. Elon Musk originally suggested Starship's tower catch would happen around flight 13 to 15, depending on V3 performance. But after booster 18 ruptured at Massey's, SpaceX may recalibrate those plans. The key detail is this. Under the original plan, Starship was supposed to reach orbit before attempting tower catch, which means flight 13 likely becomes the orbital milestone. Reaching orbit unlocks everything SpaceX has been working toward. Without orbital capability, space activities lack long-term value. You can't deliver payloads reliably, support advanced missions, or demonstrate orbital refueling. And according to current timelines, SpaceX plans to demonstrate orbital refilling by June 2025. 
That deadline reveals exactly what Flight 13 must accomplish. SpaceX needs to close out any issues from Flight 12, then validate stable orbital flight, including Raptor engine relights in space. They'll almost certainly deploy 8 to 10 Starlink simulators, proving Starship can deliver its promised 150 tons to low Earth orbit. There's also a possibility of a long-duration orbital test where Starship stays in LEO for an extended period to measure propellant boil-off rates accurately. Understanding boil-off is crucial. Starship uses liquid methane and liquid oxygen stored at hundreds of degrees below zero. Even with excellent insulation in space's vacuum, heat from the sun and vehicle systems slowly leaks in, causing propellant to boil away as gas. Current estimates suggest losing 0.3 to 0.5% per day. That sounds small until you're planning missions lasting months. Accurate measurements provide baseline data essential for orbital refueling sequences. Flight 13's landing profile changes dramatically from previous missions. Earlier flights from IFT-3 through IFT-11 targeted Indian Ocean splashdowns, thousands of kilometers from Starbase for safety reasons. But an orbital flight opens new possibilities. SpaceX could complete one or two full orbits before deorbiting, testing the heat shield at different angles, and gathering longer duration thermal data. The trajectory could extend over the Pacific with splashdown near Hawaii, or push further for Atlantic re-entry near Africa's coast. That second option requires completing three to five orbits, but tests downrange return capability critical for eventually bringing Starship back to land for direct tower recovery at Starbase or Florida. Flight 14, potentially between June and July, brings Elon Musk's original vision into focus, catching both Starship and Super Heavy with the tower. Under current plans, Pad 1 catches Super Heavy while Pad 2 handles Starship, with both stages returning to Starbase simultaneously. The complexity is real. Each tower is optimized for its specific stage, and Pad 2 needs time transitioning from launch operations to recovery mode. The biggest challenge remains Starship itself. The upper stage travels much farther downrange than the booster and endures far more severe atmospheric re-entry. SpaceX needs absolute confidence the vehicle remains structurally sound, with the heat shield performing flawlessly. The ship's condition after re-entry directly determines whether precise tower catch is even possible. Success here would make SpaceX the first aerospace organization in history to recover both stages of an orbital-class rocket. If all systems perform as intended, reuse follows almost immediately. Flight 15 could see Ship 43 or Ship 44 become the first reused Starship prototype, finally unlocking the long-promised potential of full and rapid reusability. That's when launch costs drop dramatically and flight cadence reaches an entirely new level, transforming space access from expensive and rare to routine and affordable. The total number of Starship launches in 2025 depends entirely on how quickly SpaceX can overcome these remaining technical challenges and establish reliable reusability. If the first V3 flight goes smoothly, SpaceX could realistically reach 10 to 12 missions this year. But any major failure would introduce significant delays, pushing critical milestones further down the timeline. Reuse and mission cadence are absolutely critical for lunar ambitions. To support the large number of tanker flights required for the Artemis program, Starship needs to achieve a steady launch rhythm, ideally one flight per month or more. Production capacity also plays a key role. If rapid reuse isn't achieved, building new vehicles could become the bottleneck that limits flight rate regardless of other factors. A successful first V3 flight paves the way for booster and ship recovery attempts in the missions that follow. Once SpaceX can reliably catch both stages, full reusability becomes real, removing hardware constraints for the rest of the year and opening the door to a much higher flight rate. That's when everything changes. The question isn't whether SpaceX will get there, 
but how many flights they'll complete before year's end. My personal prediction? Seven Starship launches in 2025. What's yours? Drop your prediction in the comments below, and let's see who gets closest to the actual number. If you found this breakdown valuable and want to stay updated on every major development in SpaceX's journey to orbit, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for Space Update 24 hours. We're covering every flight, every milestone, and every breakthrough as Starship transforms from prototype to operational spacecraft. Share this video with anyone following the space industry. These next few months will be historic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next update. SpaceX just confirmed something massive. For the first time ever, a fully stacked Starship will make a 1,850-kilometer ocean voyage from Texas to Florida aboard a specialized barge currently undergoing trials at Starbase. Vice President of Launch Kiko Donchevic revealed their finalizing preparations to transport the first super-heavy booster and Starship to Kennedy Space Center's LC-39A, targeting a historic Florida launch in Q2 2026. But here's what nobody's talking about. Which Starship will make this journey first? And why is SpaceX rushing to move vehicles before their Florida production facility is even ready? Let's dive right in. The timing couldn't be more critical. After nearly four years of construction since December 2021, Launch Complex 39A's Starship pad is finally crossing the finish line. SpaceX has already knocked out three of the four major environmental checkpoints. Tank farm installed, flame trench complete, orbital launch mount standing tall. The final piece, a signature on the record of decision expected by January 30th, 2026. But there's a catch most people aren't seeing. NASA shares LC-39A for the Artemis program, which means every sonic boom analysis, every debris trajectory study, every environmental impact assessment has been scrutinized three times over. The FAA isn't just waiting on paperwork. They're waiting on real flight data from Starship V3 tests at Starbase, to update their models with actual performance metrics, not estimates. So even after that January 30th deadline passes, SpaceX still needs final sign-offs from both the FAA and Space Force. What does that mean for the first Florida launch? We're looking at the second quarter of 2026 at the earliest, possibly stretching into early third quarter, depending on how quickly those approvals move. And here's where things get interesting. SpaceX doesn't have time to wait for their Florida Gigabay to start producing Starships locally. That facility won't be operational by the time LC-39A gets its green light. The solution? Move the hardware from Texas by sea. This is where Marmac 31 enters the picture. A 260-foot-long, 72-foot-wide deck barge spotted near Starbase port, running what Kiko Donshevich called a good first trial run of a transport. The barge doesn't even have its official name yet, though if we're going by Elon's September post, it'll 